And R is simply a rotation matrix. I'm going to talk more about it. And Xi is just uh, how tall this, uh, uh, this hill is. And instead of a Gaussian field, we put that in. And you can calculate very simply all the statistics uh, of, this, uh, of this field. I'm not going to go through, uh, through this analysis, mean, co uh, relation, correlation function, spectral density, all these things can be calculated easily. And of course, if you increase the rate, lambda, uh, of the uh, mean rate of the Poisson field, you increase it to infinity and the proper scaling, you end up with a Gaussian process. There are all these nice, nice properties of it. Using this approach for the well, because they provide isolated things, and the polycrystals are touching each other. Okay. So that I, I think, and I cannot control the shape that well uh, as for polycrystals. Even with the choice of age. Right, as you are going to see, I can put all kinds of things in it, uh, but it would be difficult to make them in contact and to control the shape in this way. At least this is what I think. And this is what I promise you. This is a kernel H, right? And oh, y gamma I is missing, but this is the center of the Poisson point. And this is the height A. And the cut above it, the threshold A, that would be the inclusion. Right? So again, this I'm not going to go through all these things. You recognize, perhaps, uh, uh, some of these uh, this properties. But what's impressive is you can do all kinds of things with this model. And here it's such an example. This is a kernel I took. And uh, sigmas are some control parameters. If sigma 1 is much larger than sigma 2 and sigma 3, then you get fibers. That is, the inclusion are highly elongated. And the orientation is controlled by that rotation matrix I described before. In this case, the rotation matrix, which is random, has just three values, pro direction y x, y, or z. Here it has random uh, values, uniformly distributed. That is, you take a sphere and you shoot a sphere and they are uniformly distributed on it. And here, uh, if uh, sigma are nearly equal, you get this uh, uh, round inclusions. If you want chocolate chips, you can do that too, uh, as you can see there, right? Now, one limitation of this uh, model was that lambda, that is uh, the Poisson field locating all this inclusion, was assumed to be homogeneous. Uh, and for functionally graded material, perhaps that's not the best thing. But it turns out that it can be extended very simply. And this is what I'm going to conclude with uh, this presentation. Uh, Suppose that we don't want the particles to be uh, uniformly, you, you know, if you it's a Poisson field given the number, uh, the particles are uniformly distributed, identically distributed and all these things, right? If we don't want to have that, but we want to uh, locate them uh, in this area, on this area, uh, or so on, the, then we have to use another type of Poisson field that is the same story as before, but the Poisson field, the the rate, the mean rate, that is the average number per unit volume of particles, is not fixed. It depends on the location t. You move around, it's a different value. Okay? Now, it turns out that it's possible to go from a homogeneous Poisson to an inhomogeneous Poisson in a very simple way. In fact, in one dimension, it's trivial. In higher dimension, it's not. And here's how it goes in one dimension. Suppose whether it's on the line, the uh, line being time or space, doesn't matter. Uh, if this is a Poisson uh, field and this is a rate at location t, then of course we can look at this mapping, t to u equal to m of t, defined this way. Now m of t, it's an increasing function, continuous, is invertible, so I have a map to go from one to the other. So if we calculate the expected value of n, in the coordinate, a new coordinate, distorted coordinate u, you are going to have constant times u. So this is a homogeneous Poisson field. So in one dimension, it's, it's very easy. All you do, you take the, uh, the coordinate and you stretch and distort it as lambda tells you to do. In two dimension, it's not that trivial because you cannot go one at a time. You have to distort them together. 
unless, as you are going to see, it's a special case. And how you do these distortions uh, together? Well, it's uh, very simple, in fact, I if you think it in these terms. Let's construct the following function. Lambda is before, is a rate at location t. So I'm going to construct this function here. The Poisson field is defined here uh, on that rectangle. Right? And now uh, rt is just a rectangle inside it. So m of t become a distribution, a joint distribution of a random vector, I call it t. Okay. So I can do all kinds of things with this distribution. I can calculate uh, uh, marginal up to coordinate k. I can calculate uh, not only CDF, but also PDF by taking derivatives. I can calculate conditional, and so on. And if you remember, perhaps in one of the classes you may have taken on reliability, when you have uh, a vector uh, which is, uh, uh, has dependent coordinates, and the question is how to generate out of it, well, it's a Rosenblatt transformation. Uh, if you have this M, you remember M's are the uh, joint CDFs and conditional. You can go from T's to U with this mapping where U are independent coordinates in 0, 1. You can find this transformation uh, in almost any, uh, any book on Monte Carlo simulation. So this is exactly what we are going to do. Uh, uh, we go, we have our mapping defined exactly here, and we are going to apply this mapping to generate uh, the produce Poisson fields. So this is how it, it goes. This is, uh, these are the points of the target Poisson field, which is inhomogeneous. And this is a homogeneous Poisson field with this rate and is defined on 0, 1 rectangle, with dimension d. Transformation, which you've seen before. And we just have to invert this mapping. And here are some examples. The first case is that in which the uh, intensity of Poisson uh, field has separable arguments, that is lambda of t1 times lambda of t2, and so on. In this case, I'm not going to go through uh, the derivation of this. Again, they are written all this equation. I, in this case, what happened? It turns out that you can deform the coordinates independently of each other because the coordinates t are independent random variables. And am I going the wrong way? Yes, I did go there. OK, and here it's an example of this type. This is lambda. As you see, the variables are separable, right? This is how it looks. So what does it, uh, what's going to happen? It's going to push lots of points in this area because it's higher intensity. And this is how it looks, the homogeneous part, and then the transformation map there. If you go to another example uh, in which we don't have separable variables, and this is how it looks. So we, I have a hill here and a hill there, so the points would be shifted that way. Uh, this is what you are going to get, homogeneous image, inhomogeneous, shifted in these two directions. And one more and I stop. <coughs> this is one example, a colleague of mine did it so I, uh, in a different way, so I tried to dig in. This is lambda, and these are the particle, homogeneous, inhomogeneous, homogeneous, inhomogeneous. And I'm going to stop right here, uh, perhaps just with one comment. Please remember, microstructures are sample of random field. If you don't know the probability law, you cannot produce them correctly. And thank you very much for your attention. Do you have time for some questions? Questions, do we have to uh, compute the uh, statistics based on your data? Uh, would do you have to uh, calculate the John distribution based on the data? For what? For the polycrystal yeah. model? Well, I, calc I estimate from data, as I said, conditional probabilities. Right. If the uh, dimensions are high, I mean, the task is difficult to calculate. 
Well, let me put it this way. The calculator estimates joint probability. The task is impossible. Calculating, uh, estimating conditional probability is not simple, but it's doable. We did it in two dimensions. In three dimensions, it's going to be harder for two reasons. First, more bookkeeping, but bookkeeping can be done. And then the other thing is data is themselves. It, what, you, uh, what you do in an experiment, they cut a slice <coughs> and they measure the Euler angles. Then to go deeper to the next layer, you have to cut another one and see how it goes the crystal this way. We don't have this information yet. So this is why we stay just with 2D. Yeah. Has there been any uh, discussion about uh, the validity of the Markov model for uh, Uda? No, I didn't get any, any, any the paper was published, but I didn't get any, any formal thing. But I know that there are all kinds of other models floating around, all kinds of ellipses which are moved around, and all kinds of weird things which, in my opinion, have very limited connection to data okay. in physics. Yeah. Can you generate samples with different um, shapes, including Yeah. Uh, in, in fact, I. What was the H function? Yeah, this is a very simple. Any H function you like, you can do it. If you want to c have yeah, curve. Yes, it's possible if you want to do that too. But then you have to modify slightly the model. Uh, that is, in addition, I in, uh, if you look at, the OK, this is a model, right? What we've done in this particular sample that I show, Xi is fixed, it's one. Right? You can do it in two ways. To have Xi random, as it's written there, and that is going to change the magnitude. But also, h can be a random function as well. You can make h sub i. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But for that, uh, the for the estimation is much harder. Right, right. <coughs> what we, we had, we had a problem with uh, fibers. Uh, and this is what we uh, developed the model to. So we wanted to uh, represent fibers. So we, the fibers are almost identical. So you want to keep them the same. So this is why these pictures are obtained. But no, it, it's in there. You can do it. Yeah. See, if you have the h, uh, the uh, uh, square function, mm -hmm. you could reproduce the polycrystal. Right, uh, right. But then you, you are going to have square polycrystal. I mean, uh, square crystals. You could have adjacent yeah. jumps, yeah. right? Yeah, 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 yeah. But that was the intent with the polycrystal to to be as close as possible to data. Mm -hmm. In fact, what the model does is what is done in the laboratory, yeah. but in the computer. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> what is the size of the polycrystal in the first example, the size of the image that is in the The size of the grain or the size of the aggregate of the total uh, of the grain. What is the size in this particular example? Oh. I am afraid I cannot answer. I don't remember. If it's not written there, I don't remember. Oh, oh conclusions the other way. If it's written, it's there. If not, I don't remember the size, really. Which way I'm going? I'm going, but oh. I'm going back again? It's a random motion. <laughs> random walk, right? On the Oh, because it stops here. This is what, uh, what happened. Oh, it doesn't go back. Well, oh perhaps it because it's a big picture, time. I think, takes time to so keep going. <coughs> OK, so it has to come here. OK, here, right? Yeah. <coughs> But I don't remember the dimension. I, I, I cannot tell you. But most likely, it's uh, the order of microns or something what like that. What is the material? Aluminum, mm -hmm. yes. And uh, what would be just a uh, more general, general question? What would be the applications of uh, going, through, going through constructing these microstructures at the green level? Uh, some kind of applications in the And what is the application that you will be focusing on? Oh, 
Well, uh, we started these things uh, to do fracture analysis. We are very concerned about uh, the properties of, of these grains and how the fracture goes, uh, intragranular or on the grain boundary and so on. So the origin, what has been done is to, to put this, uh, the brick model which I mentioned, this was uh, studied extensively in crystal plasticity uh, to uh, determine the global properties of polycrystals. So we're saying, well, we need to do something better because the geometry simply doesn't match. So given that, that we are doing fracture uh, analysis, uh, is uh, modeling Euler angle is I mean, it's, uh, the information of fracture is uh, carried in the more than oil angle because oil angle is a little lower level than where fracture or the nucleation uh, takes place. So well. I, I'm not expert in this area. I can tell you what, uh, what uh, some other people are telling me <coughs> is that the orientation or a misorientation on the boundary, it's a critical thing in fracture. Uh, so uh, that information uh, apparently is crucial. It leads eventually it leads to fracture. But at, at this stage, you start doing multi-scale analysis. They basically probably assume that the crack is propagating through the boundary. It depends on the misorientation of the... Well, but it also the can, go in, the can go in the grain as well, right? And uh, also the, the line of atoms can slip with respect to each other. <coughs> so it's, uh, it's very complex. So you start your simulation at this scale instead of starting at the continuum. Right, exactly. Because everything, failure happened at this scale. Uh, when you see it, it's too late. Roland? Yes. Roland, right, yeah. Have, have you talked to any of those guys or, or perhaps to uh, Ingrafia? Have, have they in integrated this into their software? Uh, no. Tools? No. Right. In, in, yeah, Ingrafia is using Roland. Yeah, but, uh, but mm -hmm. it's more deterministic. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So they, they Well, this is also very fresh. <coughs> yeah. No, my question was a little uh, different. Like, uh, fractures and everything starts at this level. Mm -hmm. I say. But Euler angle is defined the lower than that level. So my question is, uh, we modeling Euler angle, which is which lies below the level where fracture is taking place, uh, is uh, going to be any uh, is going to carry any information about the fracture. Uh, but what what happened uh, if you think of uh, uh, was going on in a grain? It's like a deck of cards. Right? These are the atomic uh, lattices. And when you shear them, they move with respect to each other. So ja uh, this causes significant stresses on the grain boundaries. But you can, uh, nobody understands this uh, precisely. In addition to that, nobody knows uh, what's the stress-strain relationship on the grain boundary. So these are problems which people working in crystal plasticity, they don't understand. Uh, but this all is, I'm told, that that's an essential input. Other questions? Yeah. Uh, can we use Markov random distribution? Well, uh, Gibbs, of course, distribution, it's a very nice thing. Uh, and it's very much related to icing model, which I mentioned before. Uh, but it's a two-state field. Our Euler angles, are, they don't have just two values. So that's, uh, this is perhaps I may have mentioned in, 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 in my talk uh, earlier. Uh, it's, that's a beautiful distribution, uh, but it's not useful yeah. for this objective. Of course, it's very useful for other things. Yeah. Thank you.